hoje, desvendamos a história da famosa Academia Ruka, na Califórnia. Trevor Whitman dá seu relato sobre o retorno histórico do UFC ao Madison Square Garden para o UFC 268. Anthony Smith compartilha sua opinião sobre o peso meio pesado do UFC. Em 2009, a popular marca Ruka formou uma academia de MMA baseada no futuro membro do Hall da Fama do UFC, BJ Penn. Desde então, a academia passou a produzir vários campeões, com Michael Bisping sendo seu maior destaque. A Ruka continua sendo um celeiro de talentos de alto nível no MMA, sob a orientação do líder Jason Parrilho. Vamos visitar Costa Mesa para saber mais sobre a academia e sua história única nesta edição do Battlegrounds. Ruka Headquarters is unique because everything coexists here from the surfing, skateboarding, art, MMA, Jiu Jitsu. Push, push. It's maybe not typical to most gyms, but it's always been a part of the DNA of the brand. Graffiti artists, MMA fighters, surfers, skaters. It's pretty cool. It's a family around here. Quality over quantity, the right advice and the right training partners. Everyone's different here, and that's what's good about it. You can be really who you want to be. We train hard, and we win fights. Three, two, let's go! All the way to the bell. Amazing, good job, Cheeto. Come on, McKenzie, all the way through. All the way through. If you've ever been to the Ruka headquarters here in Southern California, if you were to pull in a parking lot, you can see Cheeto Vera doing sprints with Jason Perillo. Artists like Defer painting a mural. People work on clothing designs. It's like a mini museum. A lot of artists have stuff hanging on the wall or installations going on. I met Pat training at LA Boxing. As much as he's into martial arts and he enjoyed, he loved jujitsu, he loved boxing. We we're 18 year old kids and the guy's got his own clothing store down the street. I knew back then the kid was going to hit it. In 1999, Ruka started my garage. V and an A, the balance of opposite is what I call it. Like the yin and the yang. Philosophy behind that was taken from Bruce Lee and how he took traditional martial arts, combined them to make his own martial art. The training center was created for BJ Penn. The proud Hawaiian BJ Penn. That right there, ladies and gentlemen, is the greatest lightweight in the history of the sport. BJ, he couldn't walk down the street. He was one of the most popular fighters in the world. In Hawaii, the small town that he's from, Hilo, there's a lot of distractions. Everyone wanted to hang out with him. They don't care what the consequence is, but it's taking away from you being focused and achieving greatness like BJ did in the UFC. I knew BJ since he was a white belt. We built our friendship all the way through to him being a black belt world champion and then being in the UFC. I had this private space. I thought I could provide a platform for him to achieve his goals as a two belt world champion. We had mats here just for jiu-jitsu training. Dana helped us with the canvas for the octagon. That was the origin of the Ruka gym. Pat just goes, let's put a gym right here. And we're like, all right. Came here, started working. Push, find him. Push, push. Show on the inside. Push. BJ defended the world title three times in here. Chris Cyborg has been through here. She's won world titles, defended a couple times. Luke Rockhold, RDA had a lot of camps over here. And Michael Bisming, he won his world championship training here. Michael Bisming, he's one of these guys that had that tenacity and that want to be the best in the world no matter what happens. Bisming's longtime trainer, Jason Perillo, believes the counters and the movement are the key to the victory tonight. Oh, oh he, he got rocked! Knockout, left hook, Jason Perillo, 
Thank you. I think champions come out of Rufe HQ because of Jason Perillo. And Jason Perillo out of Los Angeles, California. Jason was a professional boxer. Here comes Perillo. Look at he's setting down on those punches now. Hard work is out on his feet. And down he goes for a second time. Jason Perillo. I thought I was going to be a world champion, <laughs> right? That's where your mind's at when you're a kid. But I have nerve damage in my left eye. I lost half my left hand with an ulnar nerve injury. Jason retired from boxing, 9-0. and What? What? Pat always believed in me as a coach. He always believed in BJ as a fighter. He's always kind of believed that, but he's always supported it. So sometimes you find coaches that stay hungry in the game because they almost are vicariously living through their athletes because they had a hunger and a passion, the same hunger, the same passion that their athletes do, but they didn't make it. Not everybody knows how bad they want to get there. I do. After Bisbee's career and a couple other fighters' careers were coming to an end, you know, I've started establishing a relationship with these younger fighters. Just get a little warm up. Nice, elbows are tight. My two main focuses right now are Cheeto Vera and Mackenzie Dern. Two athletes that I really see are future champions for the Rupa Gym. BJ Penn, I know from jiu-jitsu, I texted him, said, hey, BJ, what do you think of Perillo? You know, what his thoughts were, his opinion, if you recommended him or not, you know? He said, man, Perillo's the man. Mackenzie, she's in a division that's very competitive, but she could continue to stay in the top 10 there for a very long time. Oh, there it is. There's the tap quickly, Ooh, another submission right. finish. Boy. Mackenzie Dern. I know for a fact, Mackenzie Dern can win a world title in that division. Hush, hush, she ups it, yeah, nice. Hush, hush. Cheeto's a smart kid, a hungry kid. One, two, hook. Hush. He reminds me so much of Michael Bisping. I knew for a long time, if I want to get somewhere in this game, I got to start training with him. He's from a boxing base, but he's not trying to make you a boxer. He's just trying to make you balanced and secure enough that you can go and fight the way you want to fight. He makes sure you're ready, you're sharp mentally to do anything you want. My whole goal is to build these fighters to the elite level and train champions. In the future, I would like to see them live the dream and following the same path as BJ Penn, Michael Bisbing. BJ Penn. This gym was built around him. He paved the way. Now there's another generation in Mia McKenzie who are looking forward to be that too. Em 2021, o UFC fez seu tão esperado retorno ao Madison Square Garden para o UFC 268. Repleto de estrelas, o card principal trouxe três dos maiores atletas do esporte, que também são colegas de equipe. Justin Gate, Rosina Mayunas e Kamaru Usman. Foi uma noite histórica para o treinador Trevor Whitman, que teve a tarefa de preparar e ser o corner dos três no dia da luta. Trevor nos conta sua experiência no UFC 268 em Uma Noite em Nova York. In 2021, the UFC is coming back after the pandemic to New York at MSG. Dateline New York and man, does it feel good to say that? It was a big deal for the UFC being able to come back to MSG and put on an event like that. Like, that's a superstar event. They all feel big, but this one particularly so. And one way or another, more UFC history will be made at the Mecca. MSG is the spot, the arena for combat sports. Some of the greatest fights in history in that arena. Oh, he's done. It is all over! For me, it was a relief to get back into an arena and have a crowd and feel the environment. Like, that's, uh, that's a special, special thing.
The whole main card for 268 was was a barn burner and, and was filled with superstars. I only trained three athletes, and all three of them are on the main card of 268. Just having one fight in one night is something that keeps my heart beating very uniquely. And I call it anticipation, but truly it's anxiety. Having all three of these fights on one card, yeah, that definitely felt like three cups of coffee. I felt like that was gonna be a huge distraction. And that was probably my most concern going in with all three of these fights, all being against the best opponents that we could ask for. There's so much on the line. Justin Gaethje versus Chandler. I almost feel like when you have a title eliminator, that's the one that you have to go out there and be spectacular because we knew he was gonna come in prepared. And then Justin, like, we're, we're on a mission to get that title. Rose had just defeated Wei Li by a head kick in the first round. Oh, early head kick! Doug Rose has regained the strawweight throne! Whoa! When I heard about the rematch, I was like, all right, cool. I think she is the best in the division right now as a coach. I also wanted that challenge again because a lot of times when you go out there and you spark someone, you want to see more, you know? You, you actually want to see yourself compete against them. So I wanted to see Rose go out there and show the world that she's better than her and did not just catch her. Oh! Oh! Colby Covington and, and Kamaru Usman, the first fight, I was so entertained by the fight. Here we go. You got two guys that are known for the wrestling and not one of them even tries to shoot. They, they go out there in this five round war. Incredible fight as advertised. And a lot of times when there's that much bad blood, it doesn't turn out to be a great fight, you know, because the, the bad blood was better than the fight and that first fight. I was blown away. It, it equally matched the top. When I found out about this rematch, I had drive and I wanted that, but I didn't know how much I wanted it on the same card with, with the other two athletes. That was, that was my only concern. I'd say out of my 22 years of coaching, this was the hardest camp that I've ever had in my life. You know, I've got Kamaro, who I start with, who's, you know, a super puncher who breaks my body down. And then I got Rose, where I almost have to hold my breath to hit Mitz with her, because she's so fast. And then I got Justin Gaethje, who's just a wrecking machine. So it's so hard physically, but I would say it's a, a, a touch harder mentally, just trying to stay focused and making sure that I'm giving each one of them 100% of my time. Hey, take a break. Yeah, you hit that right hand. I knew it was gonna be a fast night, but a long week. This fight week, the whole experience, it was heavy. My body felt it, my mind felt it. The feeling of fear, that was the hardest thing for me, is fighting through those. I've been in, on the biggest cards, I've been in the biggest main events, I've champions in different weight classes. This was so outside the box. The feeling of you've taken on too much is what makes living so worth it. Good We show up at the press conference. It was just like instantly like heated. Kobe instantly goes disrespectful. After I'm done with Marty Saturday night, he's done. He's gonna retire and he's not gonna wanna fight me again. And this rant keeps going on from Colby. Kamal's having a blast. Justin is getting <laughs> Justin's starting to bark things over to Colby. You're a <laughs> Rose is in the middle feeling this Gaethje voice. And I don't know if it's <laughs> to Rose off. So I'm watching her, that's my big concern, especially in these chaotic situations. That's the unique thing about this sport. When you go into battle, you share things that you can't explain, their feelings, their raw emotion, and that was a, a, a great raw emotion moment. It was a proud moment for a coach. They are my fight family, and it was bonding. It was something I'll remember. 
Here we go in the biggest arena in all of combat sports, the place, the house, Madison Square Garden. Well, in many respects, it's Trevor Whitman night. He's got three pupils, all of them stars. Getting to MSG, and you're walking, and then you get inside, and it's a feeling like no other. This lush history, you can feel the energy of the former athletes. There's just something unique about it. Here we go. If I were to choose any arena to ever fight in, it's that one. So in the locker room with Justin Gaethje, he's a unique guy. I'm the shot, baby. He makes the, the coaching job very fun. All right, Justin, it's your time. Let's go, JT. Let's go. His lack of fear and his excitement to fight is one of a kind. That's what we live for. He's the closest thing you can get to an old school gladiator. They don't come much more beloved. Fan bases don't come much bigger than this guy's. You know, he's all about performance, and that's a really cool thing. When you can go out there and get the crowd involved. Let's do this. You create your own energy. You create an energy force that's around you when you're fighting, and he is the best at that. Fans had so much anticipation for this fight. Almost every time the first round starts with Justin Gaethje, it's almost like being in the eye of like a hurricane. Oh, they're in the pocket. You feel it and you're like, you feel the pressure and then all of a sudden it just calms down and then everything opens up. Be sharp! Oh, nice uppercut. Justin ends up taking a punch. And then he fires a couple shots back, catches Chandler. Oh! Oh my goodness. Chandler said, he was going to go straight forward and not back up, and he's staying true to his word, which plays out into our fight. Draws a wry smile from Gaethje. That's where Justin shines greatness in chaos. Gaethje loves the chaos, man. I actually just sat back, and I let Justin be Justin. When you can make art out of chaos, it's very unique. Oh my goodness, look at this fight. He set the tone that night so damn well. That night, he was fighting for something, and I could not wait to hug him and give him his respect. Hey, you make history, baby. I fucking love you. Justin Bahamut Gaethje! You know, that fight with Justin Gaethje was, was spectacular, but it was gone. And I wanted to get rid of the past and focus on the present. And now it was Rose. The fight with Justin Gaethje, complete chaos, complete fun, fan mindset. I have to switch it into a mindset of watching Rose. I'm the best. And making sure that I'm watching body language and facial expressions to know where her mind is because she's such a mental fighter. Showtime, Let's do it. That personal time that I get with them is what makes my understanding of their mindsets so strong. I'm the best. It is a championship fight night, and that means Thug Rose has been activated. And Joe Rogan, the work she is putting in in the gym is paying off. Well, she's got amazing training with Trevor Whitman. Leading someone and being there for someone, having their back is the key to being a great coach. It's tremendous to see her complete her journey, not only as a person, but as a champ. She believes Zhang Weili represents the toughest fight in the division. Weili's a strong, strong girl. She's great everywhere, but she's strong. She's mentally strong and physically strong. And I love the way that Rose went out there and pushed her backwards. She's stalking Zhang Weili right now. Rose applying that pressure to her was a statement on, I'm here to fight. I love it, Rose! Jump, Rose! I started to notice that Rose was following Whaley, and we needed to make an adjustment. Take a deep breath, 20 seconds. Whatever you're thinking, turn it off. When I ask Rose if she's having fun. Are you having fun? And I told her, in the most simplest terms, make her feel you. Keep making her feel your spirit. Exactly like you're doing. 
championship, Harden championship medal shown by Rose Namajunas. She went out there, put her on her back, and you could see Wei Li submitting mentally. I want monkey punches! Donkey Kong! Oh, massive right from Namajunas. Right as the bell rang in the fifth round, it was clear to me, and I knew we won that fight. And I said, all right, I'm out. Enjoy this process. Kamal was next, and I had a job to do. And still, the undisputed UFC strawweight champion. All right, I'm here with the winner, and still, Thug Rose. Now we're facing Colby Covington again. <laughs> Bad blood. And it's finally here. We've set the stage, now it's time to close the night and most importantly, close his mouth. Time to shine, baby! Good night, let's go! As we walk through the tunnel, remember just looking up at the fans. The time has come for the UFC welterweight championship fight. You get so dialed in that you forget a lot of these memories. I looked up and uh, I knew I'd remember it. If he wins tonight, you're looking at a legend right there. And the argument of the best welterweight of all time starts to happen. The wait ends here. A rematch nearly two years in the making. Watching Kamaro and Colby was just spectacular. Like, I could not believe how well Kamaro was fighting and using his range and pressure. Don't forget the body, baby. Kamaro was showing that he was breaking Colby mentally. Oh my goodness. Colby was feeling what he felt in the first fight, but he wasn't able to attack back. Oh! And everything was going so smoothly, so fluently, and could not be written any better. That's when I get to talk. You look great, how you're dominating them. This is what we do. This is what we do. Colby gets to sell the fight and do everything at the press conference. You ready? You ready? Go. This is my time to be disrespectful. Break this motherfucker! I coach against you, and my goal is to break you. Yes, tomorrow. I love it. I was very proud of uh, Kamaro after the fight. He stayed in his face, he never backed up, and he did what a champion does. Does not falter in any scenario. And still! So right as Kamaro's hand got raised, it's the only time I'm in the octagon that night to witness the victory. I felt calm. The feeling after the event was over and all three fights were done, it was like I could finally breathe. I needed to accept the moment for myself. Because I have the best job in the world. I get to help people succeed. I get to help them find gold. When you're selfless as a coach, it's the little selfish moments that make that commitment worth it. And there was that moment. It was one of the greatest experiences in my life that I will never forget. Ao longo dos anos, a divisão dos meio pesados produziu algumas das maiores estrelas e momentos mais icônicos que o UFC já viu. Desde membros do Hall da Fama como Chuck Liddell e Forrest Griffin, que ajudaram a popularizar o esporte desde o início. Conversamos com o ex-desafiante ao cinturão Anthony Smith para saber sua opinião sobre a história desta condecorada divisão. The light heavyweight division is the division that, that really brought me into the sport. It was the sweetheart division. It was the one that everybody loved. That's the baddest dude on the planet. I think without the light heavyweight division, I'm not sure that the UFC makes it to where it is now, to mainstream. Oh, what a finish! What, what a finish! 
The division has been so popular because of the type of athletes that come into that division, and it's brought nothing but excitement over the years. Rampage Jackson knocks out Vanderlei Silva! Your Rampages, your Chuck Liddells, your, your Shamrocks, Tito Ortiz, those guys are, are responsible for bringing a lot of fans to the sport. Chuck Liddell really resonated with fans because he seemed like a good old boy, and I think he really just captivated people because Chuck Liddell seems like the type of guy you could have a beer with. And then I think his rivalry with Tito really drug people in. Bro, you won't step in the ring with me again, you know that. I let him step in the ring again, that ain't a problem at all. I'll knock you out again. And you can really tune into that rivalry and pick a side, essentially. When the light heavyweight belt was kind of playing a game of popcorn, it's just whoever could hold on to it. I think those were some of the best times. You know, you get guys like Rashad Evans and Leona Machida and Shogun. It was bouncing around, and Forrest Griffin had it, and Rampage had it, and to even defend at one time. It was all anyone could do. Once John Jones came into the division, things changed. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the future. I think John Jones was the first of a new generation of fighter. John brought a different style, he brought a different approach, he brought a different physicality to the octagon that no one had at the time. John Jones versus Alexander Gustafson is absolutely, in my opinion, the greatest fight of all time. What we're seeing in John Jones is a very, very special athlete. And there is a record on the line tonight, and that is the record for consecutive title defenses in the light heavyweight division. We knew that John was good. We knew that he was technically the best fighter in the world, but we weren't so sure if John had that fighting spirit deep down inside of him to, to really fight back from adversity and be in a dogfight and win it. Oh, big combination by Gustafson. Goes high. This is a very competitive fight. Unbelievable. They are on their feet. Unbelievable. What a fight. That might be the greatest title fight in the history of the light heavyweight division. Chill. That was the first time that John had been pushed and had to find that dog inside of him and really pull it out. The John Jones-Daniel Cormier rivalry is, is one of my favorite ones. Those guys genuinely hate each other. It was very personal for them. They did go to some dark places with each other. Oh, uh, you got your ass whipped today, buddy. No, I didn't. You're a pussy. Oh, uh, yeah, you did it. You had you on You're your such a little bitch. Oh, my on God. Back. On top of that, they were the two best guys, not just in the division, but probably in the world. I mean, these are easily the two best light heavyweights of all time. And here they are tonight as our main event. I think that that probably doesn't happen very often, where the number one and number two pound-for-pound -pound guys are in the same division. The bad blood just continued to boil. Look at this. Oh! Perhaps maybe all the bad blood has not boiled over. All this crap he talked, it motivated me. I'm sorry that I'm being classless right now. I do not like DC, and this is why I'm being this way. It was based off of competitiveness. It sucked me in, and I know that it sucked in the rest of the world. I think DC is ah! so motivated for this fight. Daniel Cormier has a chance to silence all the doubters, all the haters, put it down, and stick it in John Jones' face. The wait is over. John Jones is back to take on one of his chief rivals, Daniel Cormier. Oh, John landed a high kick. He's hurt. DC was stunned by that head kick. That could be it. Trying to survive. It. That out. is it. John Jones has done it. A valiant effort, but a patient John Jones closes the show. Credit does need to go to John for deciding to move up to heavyweight and deciding to push himself. With John Jones out of the division, I think it gives a lot of people opportunities to be world champions, to show how great they are. Glover has a massive opportunity tonight. Oh! Oh, he hurt him. Glover's into the mount here. Well, oh, oh, my God! Oh, back. oh, my God! Oh, there's oh. the count! Glover oh. Teixeira breaks through at 42! Wow! He's the undisputed light heavyweight oh. champion! <laughs> he actually did it! Teixeira!
Light Heavyweight is a cool division to be a part of right now. There's a lot of young talent. There's a lot of up-and-comers. And the fun part for me is there's a lot of unknowns. There's a lot of guys that we're not sure how good they are. Oh! What a fucking knockout for Akalayo! Wow! Oh, there it is! Yuri Pelosco! Wow. Baby boy! Welcome to the big show! I'm really excited about the future of this division. E chegamos ao fim deste episódio. Entre em contato com a gente e compartilhe sua opinião online usando a hashtag Conexão UFC. Até a próxima!